This is your Monday Night Raw review for January 15th, 2024. Tonight's Raw in Little Rock, Arkansas was impacted by a snowstorm. They had a new smaller set tonight. It kind of looks like a house show set, but a, a little bit bigger than that. I liked it. People seem to like it. I don't think it's going to stay because I think it was only just for tonight because of the venue and the snow on top of the building. Because, you know, the regular screen they use is really big. It weighs a lot, so it was just too risky. So a nice little change for tonight. Cody Rhodes opens the show. And right before he was about to talk about the Royal Rumble match, Drew McIntyre comes out and interrupts him. And I thought that Drew was going to spill the same BS he's been saying over the last few months about how Cody brought Jay Uso over to Raw and cry about this and that. But instead, we have Drew praising Cody Rhodes. He even brings up their old tag team from about 15, 14 years ago, the dashing ones. Honestly, I don't remember this at all. I was like 10 years old when this happened, but apparently they were tag team champions. What? Yeah, I don't remember this at all. Drew then says that Cody will finish his story, but not before he does. He then questions Cody's personality. He says that Cody's being fake to wipe that smell off of his face, to take that suit off and be real. Drew says that he's been doing this fake personality for years, since 2020, trying to carry the company on his back. Where then Cody replies by saying he is thankful to be in the position that he is in and that this is all real. They both then claim that they will win the Royal Rumble match. And then Drew, again, blames Damian Priest for cashing in or trying to cash in his money in the bank and failing and making Drew lose his title match. But you know what? Recently, Drew's been having some pretty good promos. He's probably having the best slate of promos of his entire career in the WWE, at least. And I like that they are setting up multiple storylines for the Rumble match. They did that with CM Punk and Drew last week. Now Cody and Drew. Yeah, this was a nice opening segment. I like it. Next, we get a backstage segment. R-Truth, the MVP of Monday Night Raw. He is the funniest part of this show. He was selling Judgment Day merchandise, bootleg Judgment Day merchandise in the parking lot. And apparently made a lot of money from it. Damien Priest was even upset when he caught him until he saw the money. And when he got his cut, everything was fine all of a sudden. Priest then tells Truth to not tag in in their tag team match later tonight between the awesome Truth and Priest and Finn Balor. Our Truth seemed to think that Priest was joking a bit, but later tonight we will see that Priest was being 100% serious. Dom and JD McDonough versus DIY. This may have been the match of the night, and I think that no one saw this coming. Michael Cole on commentary mentions that DIY are trying to position themselves for a future tag team title opportunity, and they made it be known. They came out in this match pretty hot to start. On the Judgment Day side, there was a lot of cheating to put them in the upper hand side to give them the advantage. And eventually, but after about 10 minutes of back and forth action, we got this is awesome chance and the match that was truly awesome. They were right. The fans were actually right for once. We had that uh, quadruple clothesline spot. That was pretty cool. And that's when the chance broke out. But in the end, Gargano pins JD McDonough, who was just there to take pins at this point, And DIY gets the victory. Next, we get a backstage segment. You know, Chelsea Green blames the ref's slow count for her loss last week. And Adam Pierce looks very, very annoyed, like always. I love their little chemistry, their little whatever you call it. But Chelsea Green is great. Then the match is made, Chelsea and Piper versus Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. The first of two matches tonight, 
that had women's tag team championships implications involved. Now, my biggest takeaway isn't the match itself. It's the fact that Samantha Irving is no longer allowed to say Chelsea Green's name in that funny way. I don't know whose idea it was to make her stop doing that, but they need to rescind that idea because that sucks. Okay, this was a short match. Indy and Candice take the win. Not much here. And while this match was happening on Instagram, CM Punk says that he wants to go face to face with Cody Rhodes next week on Monday Night Raw. Oh boy, I can't wait to see what they have to say to each other. I have no idea what they would say. Surely something involving the Royal Rumble, but this should be pure cinema. We then get a Nia Jax video package, and we see that Rhea Ripley is watching it backstage, and she looks upset. So she says that she needs to go to the ring and address her division. I think we might be getting Rhea versus Nia, but not at the Rumble, maybe at the Chamber, since the Elimination Chamber will be in Nia Jax's hometown, or where she was born, I think. So that should be pretty good. That may even be the main event of that show, since Roman Reigns is not competing. Yeah. But it's sort of home turf for both women, so... They deserve that moment. But continuing with this backstage segment, Priest shows Judgment Day the money that Truth gave him. And then he tells them to go find Truth for their cut. And then JD says, where's my cut? Then Priest goes on and says that, well, your name is not on the shirt, so tough luck. You can tell that Damien really likes our truth There even was that report earlier that in real life, Damien was the one who had the idea to have Truth involved with the Judgment Day. Very similarly to how Sami Zayn was involved with the Bloodline. Or our truth be the reason why Damien Priest leaves the Judgment Day? I think so. Gunther is back on Monday Night Raw after his short hiatus. He cuts a promo and talks about how last year at the Royal Rumble, he had a historical performance. He entered at number one and was the second to last man out. This led to Cody Rhodes' chance, and Gunther looked a little bit bothered by it. I don't think that that's a match that's going to happen anytime soon, but if it is, ooh boy, that's going to be a banger. He then says that this year, he will win the Royal Rumble match. And then he turns his attention to Ludwig Kaiser, and he does an evaluation of what Ludwig did last week to Kofi Kingston. They then show the footage of last week's attack, and Gunther says, What I saw there, I love to see that. You show grit, confidence, and courage. Well done. And then he gives Ludwig a big hug. Xavier Woods then interrupts. He's very upset at Ludwig. He says that he took it 10 steps too far for taking out Kofi the way he did. He then challenges him to a match and says, will he accept the challenge or does he need to ask his daddy for permission? Then the crowd chants, who's their daddy? This gets Kaiser mad and he accepts the challenge. But right before the match begins, Woods attacks Kaiser on the outside of the ring. They eventually get back in the ring and they put on a very aggressive match. Xavier fighting for revenge of his best friend and Kaiser looking to prove himself. It even got to the point where Woods was bleeding out of the mouth. That's how intense this match became. Woods would then throw a chair at Kaiser the same way that he did to Kofi last week. This leads to a DQ and another brawl. Kaiser hits Xavier with a super kick and attempts to attack him on the steel steps and do the same thing he did to Kofi last week to Xavier this time. Xavier gets out of that position. He then tries to throw the steel steps at Ludwig. He misses and then Kaiser runs through the crowd and escapes. Byron Saxton backstage interviewing Xavier Woods after this match and quickly Kaiser comes out of nowhere and attacks Xavier. And within seconds, it is stopped by Jay Uso, who gives him a good stare down. Are we getting Jay Uso versus Gunther eventually? 
I think this is how it begins. And honestly, Jay Uso dethroning Gunther? Not a bad idea. When it happens, I don't know, but he is main event Jay Uso. He can be the one that does it. And before this, we got a Bronson Reed promo where he says there is a WWE champion with a title that will soon belong to him. Who is he talking about? I don't know. It's either Gunther or Seth, but whoever it is, they're not losing to Bronson Reed. So, yeah. Next. Akira Tozawa versus Ivar. This was a quick squash match, but we did get that cool sunset flip powerbomb. I did not expect to see that. That was a pretty cool spot. After the match, Valhalla and Ivar would attack Maxine and Akira Tozawa, and Ivar would connect with the Doom Salt. Then backstage, Chad Gable would tell Tozawa that he is close to graduating from the academy, but he needs to teach him how to be alpha. So next week, we are getting Gable versus Ivar. Rhea Ripley then comes out. She cuts a promo and sends a warning to the future Women's Royal Rumble match winner. She says whoever wins that match better not waste their time and challenge her. And mommy is always on top. But then Becky Lynch with the interruption. She would hype up the careers of both women saying that one year they were afterthoughts of WrestleMania. And the next year they were on top of the industry. But the difference is that one of us main evented WrestleMania and the other did not. Well, that's not fair because Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley could have easily been the main event of WrestleMania night one last year, but it wasn't, so she's right. But then shockingly, Becky would say that she has voices in her head that say, I think you might be better than me, but I have to prove that you are not. And I need to take that title off of you. I need to win the Royal Rumble. I need to point at that sign. It needs to be mommy versus the man. That match is going to happen. But Becky Lynch is not winning the Rumble. I mean, she could. But I think that Bailey's winning. But Rhea confidently says, Becky, I will see you at WrestleMania. It's happening. The Miz and R-Truth versus Damian Priest and Finn Balor. We got this funny graphic from R-Truth. And during the entrance, Truth came out with the Judgment Day, even though he's supposed to be against them. And Finn took notice of this, which led to R-Truth dropping the money and then giving it to Finn and Dom. And then JD says, where's my cut? And then Truth says that you have to be a member of Judgment Day to get a cut. So remember how Damian Priest said to Truth to not tag in? Well, Michael Cole pointed out that he never said anything about Truth starting the match, which he did. Him and Finn Balor lock up to start the match. And notice how Finn has no problem competing with Truth. But as soon as Damian Priest gets involved, he hesitates. But he was eventually forced to deliver the South of Heaven chokeslam on Truth. Then Finn covers him and takes the victory. But while this is happening, while they celebrate, you can notice that Damien looks a little bit uncomfortable. He's staring at Truth as if he like feels sorry about it. It was like that I'm sorry I love you moment. Well, not to the same degree at all, but you get my point. Eventually, Truth is going to be the reason why Damien leaves Judgment Day, and he turns babyface that way. But come on now, Truth gave all of them their cut, and they still did him dirty. Where's the loyalty? Next, we get two quick backstage promos. First from Jinder Mahal. He basically says that he is the most talked about star of 2024. Well, we're only two weeks in, but he's not wrong after the past week, thanks to Tony Khan. And then we get a Shinsuke Nakamura promo. He seems to not be fully done with Cody Rhodes. I'm a little bit over this feud, but to each his own. 
he talks about the Royal Rumble match, and yeah, that's about it. Shayna Blazer and Zoe Starks versus Tegan Knox and Natalia. It's pretty cool that we're getting these women's tag team title showcase type matches, building up contenders. This match was, it had its sloppy moments, but it was fine. In the end, Shayna would tap out Natalia, and she would keep the submission in for a few more seconds after the bell rang, making her look strong. I think these two are the next women's tag team champions. They're going to build more chemistry over time, and they're going to be an amazing team. And finally, our main event, Jinder Mahal taking on Seth freaking Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship. And Jinder would come out with his boys, Ender Share. Veer finally came. Well, I think he came before. Wait, this this sounds funny. Anyway, early on in the match, both men will attempt to hit their finishers. Both missed. Seth will end up on the outside of the ring. Ender Shearer will constantly try to distract them. And then eventually, Damian Priest will walk out with his money in the bank briefcase. Then we hit to a commercial break. And as we come back, we see Damian Priest sitting ringside with his briefcase. And eventually, Seth would hit a pedigree on gender. But his knee will give out and he will go for a slow cover in which one of Ender Shear members breaks up the pinfall. He would go outside and deal with them. Then he will hit a splash, but then he will be laid out. And at this moment, Damien will stand up and think about cashing in his money in the bank briefcase. Then out of nowhere, out of the crowd, Drew McIntyre will stop him. He gets in the face of Damien Priest and then they begin to brawl. And while they brawl on the outside of the ring, Jinder Mahal takes a cheap shot at Seth Rollins, hits a big move, one, two, and no, Seth kicks out. In the sheer, throws a steel chair into the ring. The ref sees it, tries to take it out the ring, and while his back is turned, they hit Seth Rollins with the money in the bank briefcase. Then Mahal takes advantage once again, one, two, and Seth kicks out again. In the sheer are beside themselves outside of the ring on the apron. Then Seth hits the curb stomp on gender. One, two, three. Seth Rollins retains. Super Rollins. LOL Rollins wins. And shortly after this, Raw cuts off the air quickly. I gotta be honest, they kind of had me fooled a couple times in this match when uh, the distractions happened. They got me. I thought that gender was going to win the title. But yeah, we know for sure Seth is not losing that title until at least WrestleMania. And maybe not even then. But I'm fine with it. I'm a Seth Rollins fan. It's cool. Okay, here's a quick little preview of next week's Raw. This is what we know so far. That CM Punk and Cody Rhodes promo is going to be great. I can't wait. I can't wait to see what they're going to say to each other. Alright, fun show tonight. I give it an 8 out of 10. I was entertained for most of the show. We had a couple of awesome matches, but those are my opinions. Let me know what you guys think of the show. Leave your comments below. Please like, subscribe, share, do whatever. Help your boy out. Help me grow my channel. And you guys, stay smooth.